pillows with words speak to your style in a whole different way. And I'm not sure monograms ever go out of style. I'm Rebecca Kemp Brent, and I have a favorite way to make patterns for applique letters that I'd like to show you. On my samples up here, you'll see that I've used a couple of different kinds of thread or colors of thread. That's because another style choice that you can make is whether you'd like to have a matching or a contrasting edge around your letters. But let's go to the computer and talk about how we make those patterns. I'm going to be using an ordinary word processing program. If you have a different setup on your computer, your commands may be in different places, but the system's the same pretty much from one to another. Um, these are basic commands that we'll be using. So let's begin by typing in a letter. And as you can see, this is really small. Obviously, there's no way that's going to work as an applique pattern. So now let's highlight the letter, and I'm going to go to the part of my screen where the font commands are and click on this little arrow to open my font dialog box. In that box, I have several different options. This is the font menu itself, and you probably have a lot of different fonts on your computer. If you don't, there are even more available free online, or you can purchase new fonts. I'm using one called Times New Roman that's an old font, very traditional. It used to be the default font on a lot of word processors. But I actually like the shapes of these letters really well for applique. Next, we have a box that's called Font Style. You can play around with italic letters if you like. And I'm going to select Bold just because that gives the shape of the letter a little bit more heft, and that can be a good thing. The next box is Size, and that's where the magic starts. If you pull down the menu, you'll notice that this goes all the way to 72. We have a little preview box here at the bottom of the screen, and when I click on 72, you'll notice that my previewed letter gets bigger. But that's still not a very big letter. In a newspaper, a 72-point headline is screaming big, but when you're doing applique, we need something bigger. What you may not know is that you're not limited to that drop-down menu, so I can go to the Size button, and I'm going to type in 300. And when I tab to the next box, you'll see in the preview that my letter is now a lot bigger. One more thing before we're finished, and this may be in the Effects section, or if you have a different version as I do, you click on Text Effects, and then I'm going to turn off the fill, and I'm going to turn on the outline, and this is going to give me an outline-only pattern for my letter, just like that. Now it's starting to look like an applique. I have a ruler on the side of my screen, and if yours is not showing the rulers, just check your help menu to see how to cut those on. From that, I can see that this letter is about two inches tall, so maybe I'd like it even a little bigger than that. We'll select the letter again and go to the font area of my toolbar. I don't even have to go back into the font box for this. I'm just going to select the number, and let's type in 700 this time. Now it gets so big it actually has fallen off my screen. So I'll scroll down and look. Now we have a really wonderful big letter C. If we look at the rulers, this is about four and a half inches tall, and that should make a really good one letter monogram. So I'll send that to my printer, and then I have the nice printed pattern ready to use with my machine. Sometimes, depending on the project you're doing, you may even be able to get more than one letter on your piece of paper. The nice thing about that is that you not only have patterns for each individual letter, but your spacing and your alignment are already taken care of for you. Now let's go to the machine and I'll show you the next step in the process, which is actually stitching the monograms. To stitch our monograms, we need four different layers. I'm going to put a layer of tearaway stabilizer on the bottom, and then I have my background fabric, and this could be a pillow panel or a shirt, whatever you're going to sew the monogram onto. Then I have my monogram fabric, which I backed with a fusible web and taken off the paper, and then finally, I have the pattern that we just printed on the computer. I'm going to take a couple of pins and just pin all these layers together. Now I'm going to go to the machine and set it up for a straight stitch 
I like to use the center needle position for visibility, and I've adjusted the length so that it's only about 1.6 or 1.8 millimeters long. I'm going to just stitch right on top of my outline, just as it's printed. And you can adjust the speed of your machine a little bit if you want to. You need to keep a good control over this while you're stitching around the letter so that you sew right on top of that outline. When you finish stitching all the way around your letter, then we're ready to take away this paper pattern that we've printed. And I'm going to do that just by tearing the paper. And you can see that because of our short stitch length, it tears away easily and pretty cleanly. Now I'm going to switch to another sample. I finished tearing off the last of the outside paper and then this inside portion just lifts up almost in one piece. And there's my stitched letter. Now you'll notice I have not fused this in place yet and that's really important. I'll tell you when. Take a pair of sharp small scissors and you're going to trim as close as you can to the outline of your letter. Okay, now I'm going to switch samples again. Then as you finish with the trimming, now we're ready to go and fuse the letter. Once you have fused this letter in place, it's really pretty well fixed on your fabric. So it's up to you whether you want to stitch the edges or not. I like to set my machine for a nice wide zigzag stitch. In fact, this is a tip I'll give you. If you are concerned that your applique stitching doesn't look quite as professional as you might like it to look, try widening the stitch just a bit. I see a lot of appliques that are stitched at about three millimeters width and it's really not quite wide enough. So try a five millimeter satin stitch instead and see if you don't like those results better. And as you stitch, you want one swing of your zigzag to fall just outside the edge of your applique. And the other swing is going to stitch through the applique fabric and the background. So when we get all the way around our letter, there you have it. A wonderful applique in just the shape that you chose. Now, if you have an embroidery machine and software, there's a way to make this process even a little simpler. So come back to the computer with me and let me give you a quick peek at that. In embroidery software, you'll actually use three different copies of your letter. The first one is your defining stitch to show you the shape that you need to trim. The second one is a tack down stitch, just to be sure that your fabric stays in place after you've trimmed it. And just as we did at the machine, you'll trim the applique fabric between those two steps. The third is your satin or other finishing stitch. And when you have all three of those digitized, then you just want to stack them on top of each other. If you use your alignment commands, it's very easy to get everything lined up precisely and then as you can see with this little preview it will stitch out just the way you planned all three steps. Now with some programs there's an even simpler option than that. For those software programs all you have to do is type in your letter and then select the applique option. You can change the size of the letter if you want and when you hit enter, it automatically digitizes it for you with all three steps in place. So whatever method you choose, I hope you'll enjoy making your mark on all your own projects with these monogram ideas. <laughs>